Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about the comic book industry. Uh, we're gonna talk about the comic book industry losing its crap over Substack. Still, I mean, we're talking six, eight months after Substack, blogging platform Substack, decided it was going to pay comic book creators to come to their platform, create original material, and it was giving them fat advances to do so. Right, I remember covering that back then. Right, they're still screaming about it. Of course they are. Uh, they're still angry it's not them. At the end of all of this, despite all the uh, justification for the hatred toward Substack, at the end of all of this, I believe it's because these particular creators were uh, very salty. They didn't get picked. Uh, they're very yeah, salt. Yeah. yeah. They're hoping they scream they will. They're hoping if they scream they will. And Substack is another end run around the mainstream comic book industry. Oh, you mean the comic book industry? They worked really, really, really hard to take over and gatekeep from everybody else? Yes. Uh, they worked so hard to gatekeep the comic book industry and shrink the comic book industry that now that people are doing end runs via Substack and uh, crowdfunding and webtoon and all these other things, now they're losing their shit. Because just screaming that everybody's an istophobe, whether they are or not, just because they didn't get their own way, doesn't work anymore? It doesn't work anymore. Oh, it doesn't work anymore. Look at that. So we're gonna talk about this uh, continued attempt to cancel Substack. Uh, they're looking for every possible reason to cancel the platform. Let's but, cancel stupidity. Before we get into it any further, this video is sponsored by Pocket Option. Pocket Option was founded in 2017, and today they continue to develop, improve, and constantly innovate the trading experience. They've got more than 100,000 active users, more than $500 million trading turnover, uh, more than 95 different countries and regions are available with Pocket Option, and the average trader income per month is over $800 in $50. You can trade with 100 plus trading instruments like Forex, stocks, and crypto. There are over 50 plus deposit methods. You can deposit through any of these, Coinbase, Bitcoin, Litecoin. The best part about this is that there is a 0% commission on deposit or withdrawal. Pocket Option features an easy deposit and payout, only $10 minimum investment. That's all you need, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. Uh, use the preferred payment methods for rapid and convenient processing. They have 24-7 support. Their team is always ready to provide assistance and answer any questions that may arise in a timely and professional manner. One of the most important features which sets them apart from other brokers is S5. S5. This feature allows you to trade 20% faster than other brokers. The minimum expiration time has been reduced from 60 to five seconds, you know, S5, for all assets available on the platform, which will help you trade fast and earn fast. And guys, if you don't want to invest right away, I recommend you go and join their demo account where you will get $10,000 to trade. No, not, not real money. This is a demo. This is a demo only, it's not real money. Full-fledged training environment lets you evaluate all the advantages of the platform using virtual funds so you can kick the tires. So guys, don't wait. If you invest today, it will help you in your future. The link is in the description. You can check it out for yourself. That's Pocket Option. Now back to the video. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 255,000. I think we're at 256. I'm Are we? 256. Yay, I didn't check today, but yay. Yeah, thank you so much for the support. Uh, we do talk about the comic book industry, having made comic books ourselves and having worked in and around the industry. And we know firsthand of the bitterness of comic book pros. Oh my God, yes. Uh, it's gotten to be a very depressing industry. It really has. Uh, you know, you've got, there basically is no middle class in comics. You're either doing very, very well and you're getting your TV deals and your book deals and all that stuff, or you're barely scraping by and you're on Twitter all day complaining about how you're barely scraping by. Oh yes, because don't you know you're just owed that because you're you. Right. So now Substack uh, is announcing formally all of the uh, creators, the first wave of creators. They do hope to open it up to more people, but we've got Twitter complaining that they're all a bunch of already wealthy cis white men, which we're going to go down the list. This is not actually the case. Uh, but beyond that, Substack is a meritocracy. Substack, you basically uh, create blog posts and you monetize your audience. If you have a larger audience, you already had to earn it. You've already had to be good enough to tell stories people wanted to read to hear to earn it to begin with. 
Right. And, and they're mad because they don't have that, too. And they should just be given that audience because they're them and they're the right kind of person. Right. And like book publishing, not comic comics publishing or graphic novels, but regular book publishing, you can be a controversial figure with uh, a large following and they know it's going to translate into book sales. Right. So Substack has given people, uh, you know, advances. They've given comic book creators fat advances, like six figure advances Dang. Um, to come to their platform. Not everybody, but I think they're looking at, you know, at a, a case by case basis. You know, if you were the top writer on Batman, we're going to give you a hell of a lot more money than somebody that just had some webcomic or something. that. Didn't yeah, but there's well. people who have webcomics that, that brought in like six figure crowdfunders. Yeah. Well, I think it's case by case. You I think everybody's... Call me. Call us, Substack. We'll take your money. Gladly, we'll take your money. I'll do just to piss people off. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, I would. I would. I'd be like, you know what? We'll do it just to piss you off. Um, Shadow Binders, exclusively on Substack. Mm -hmm. That is it. That's how Except we're going to do, do it. we do print books, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, but, well, this is the thing. The deal, as I understand it, with comics is that they can take their, you know, they have to publish it on Substack first right. digitally. But then they can take it themselves and they can go like Dark Horse or something. And exactly. It. Which is why I would do it. It's a pretty good deal. You know, but it's a but deal. It's, not, it's, it's a pretty good deal, but only for the elite. Yeah. That is exactly what's going on. And I know. <laughs> it's so predictable. I know there were some Substack, uh, Substack uh, PR people out there, marketing people out there that were basically like, you know, hey, look. Uh, Substack is meritocracy. There are people that publish things on the platform. Meritocracy is hate speech. It is. It is. Um, so now all of a sudden, within the last week or two. We've got the media coming of coming after Substack they are. again. And they're gonna use that. They're gonna leverage that. They're gonna leverage misinformation about vaccines and stuff. Is what they're gonna try to leverage to get taken down. Oh yep. my god. This ranks up there with um uh well, I'm not making this a pro uh, for or against vaccines. I'm not we're not gonna talk about that. That's up to each person. But like that Evangeline Lily thing and she went to that oh, protest. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw people on Twitter trying to make it because the comments other people made that that trying to bring the Holocaust into it to try to get her banned because it worked with getting Gina Carano banned. Yeah. Um, because that's what they're going to do. They're going to bring the things they know have worked in the past. And they're going to try to leverage that now because just screaming and calling people istophobe isn't working. Well, what's going on too is you have a lot of really salty journalists. Now, these are these are journos, mostly Substack until recently was, you know, for journalists. And there are journalists on there they don't like. I think Barry Weiss is on there, uh, worked for the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And she's a wrong thinker now, even though she used to be pretty far left. She's a wrong thinker now. But we can't speak to those people. We only can speak to comics. Right. But they're... It's really weird that within the last week, there's been all this chatter amongst journalists about how awful Substack is. Again, out of the blue, it's been around it's for the a couple... same speaking points that have nothing to do with same, anything. Same bullet points, right? And then all of a sudden, we've got the comic book community jumping in so wait, on it, too. Let me get this straight. So they get mad about something, and they try and take it down. When just yelling about because it's not them, and they're not the ones getting the money, and they're pissed about it, doesn't work. Then yeah. they start leveraging these hot-button topics to try yeah. to get them removed that way. Yeah, okay? bas basically, Shocker. if it wasn't enough to guilt you into uh, you know giving us a Substack deal, and we have uh, Molly Ostertag, who's Noel Stevenson's wife, and Noel Paul Stevenson, I think, started their own blog too. It was, I don't think it's a paid one, but so we have a lot of creators over there that are quote unquote diverse, but they keep zeroing in on There's like five of you that aren't. There are five of you there, that are. That just should white not guys. be allowed. You're 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 hate speech because you're the you're the wrong you're the wrong gender, sexual orientation, or race. You're literally walking hate speech. It doesn't matter what you say or think, it's just because you're it's this white dude. You know? Yeah. So I mean these are tip don't contact any of these people. You know, but, you know, this is a typical comment that I, I found. And and again, this is this is not new news. This has been, you know, six or eight months now. But any attempt to escape the comic book ghetto, which basically has become at this point, you know, for a lot of creators are not making a lot of money. They're kind of trapped where they're at. They're not getting the book deals or not getting the movie deals. Any attempt to get out of that situation is met with hostility from the people that are still stuck in the, the barrel. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously that, um, that happens all the time, though. You know, I would love it if some of the already highly successful cis comic book creators have taken money from Substack would go on the record to hold Substack accountable for hateful anti-trans rhetoric. Why would they have to hold them accountable? It's not the comic book creators. Look, Substack came out and said there are people that say shit on our platform that we don't agree with. But we also believe that free speech should be allowed. And there are fewer and fewer platforms that allow 
free speech. Right. But I think it's funny, though. You could just head this way. I love it as some of the successful comic creators. Why did you have to put cis in there? Why did that matter? Uh, because, because. Because why? Because it's comic book Twitter. Don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Anyway, um, they've got their PR machine fired up here at Substack. Uh, you know, the rap put the thing out there about how it's adding new creators as the comic program expands. See, I'm only familiar with them in regards to the comic program. I honestly have no clue what's going on with the journalism stuff. I don't know. Don't care. Yeah. Um, we've got IGN. IGN will take their money. Mm -hmm. IGN's like, hey, Substack is suddenly one of the most important comic book platforms. And again, you can think really? what... It, I think that's pushing it. I okay. think that's pushing it. Um, anyway, they're talking about how Substack is making the next big push in the comics. Starting on January 31st, this is being treated as the real launch day for Substack's comics line, with a number of creators either debuting new pro projects or making existing subscriber exclusive material. So it's web comics. It's web comics. Yes. Remember web comics? It's almost as if there were people doing it 10, 15 years ago, making right, right, livings right. off of it uh -huh. and crowdfunding their books. And even before, even before Kickstarter, before Patreon, they were taking direct payments mm -hmm. and giving people uh, early access to comics. And, 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 and it was considered amateur hour, but now it's, it's the future. It was considered amateur hour. Yes. Anyway, uh, Jonathan Hickman uh, is doing Three Worlds, Three Moons. Uh, with Mike Huddleston, Mike, Mike Del Mundo, Chip Zdarsky. We have da uh, James Tinian, 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 I don't know. Uh, from Batman. Uh, Jeff Lemire, uh, Kelly Thompson, cis white male Kelly Thompson, and Meredith McLaren's mm -hmm. Black Cloak, Donnie Cates, and Ryan Stegman. Molly Ostertag, again, wife of Noel Stevenson. Uh, Rodney Barnes, uh, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, and Sophie Campbell, uh, trans creator Sophie Campbell. It took uh -uh. a deal. That they're not. It's just all those cis white dudes who need to stand up. All those cis uh, white dudes. Actually, Sophie Campbell's uh, Gem and Ninja Turtles comics were very, very good. Uh, very good. Just have to add that because I always liked I always liked Sophie's art. Anyway, uh, yeah. So this is coming from Raps Pro, and they're talking about they're like Substack, the four-year-old San Francisco company, <laughs> six hundred fifty million dollars. Um, in recent years, tech giants from Twitter to Facebook have joined in the newsletter game, trying to basically put them out of business. Uh, emerging companies, Ghost, Button Down, have also rolled out similar newsletter products. But here's the thing. Uh, check this out. The company also started offering $500 health insurance stipends more widely to independent writers last year. So the signs are doing something, you know, a lot of places aren't doing. And a lot of the things that the Twitter yells about, they're actually doing. Yeah, right? I mean, everybody's complaining about how comic book creators don't get health insurance. And they're uh, trying to work to help people, but they're the devil because they didn't let me have health insurance that, on the platform. That is literally it. And they're showing off some of their uh, diverse uh, projects here. Uh, newcomers to Substack include Grant Morrison uh, from Batman, um, Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, yeah, these are all big names. And this mm -hmm. is, you know, look, a lot of the major, major talents from Marvel and DC are taking these Substack deals because they're getting paid more. They're basically getting paid to create stuff they would have created for image, but there's no risk on their part because they're getting paid to create it. It's like they're they're sponsoring them to create the content and then they get to double dip and they get to go take their project someplace else and print it. Right. But there's no, no but downside. But it only helps Substack if you do that because it'll send audiences to go read the other stuff that's on there already. Yeah. Um, so here they have some some projects. Uh, they have uh, comic artist Jem Bartel, who has worked on cover art for Marvel and Disney, will introduce a solo project. Hey! You worked on cover art for IEW Disney I and did. art for Disney. I did. Hey, Substack. <laughs> I did. And Black. we have our own. We have our own books I and did. some other ones that aren't out yet. Just um, say. Sweet Tooth creator Jeff Lemire, who was was uh, you know getting all kinds of Hollywood deals, he took a Substack deal, and um, yeah, uh, Substack is already home to big name writers. Uh, last April, Substack boasted 12 million readers a month. Recently reached a million paying subscribers. Okay, so I do, so Substack mostly did the writing stuff, but now they're doing the comics starting today. Yes, officially. Okay, officially, I knew they had announced it before. But yeah, it's officially starting today because you know the other stuff that's great, but I don't. That's not something I really pay attention to. The the comics is what I'm going to pay attention to. I love this. When comics creators are able to own their work and succeed financially, we call that a win. I would call that a win. Twitter does not call it a win. No, no, it calls it a win if it's them. They call it a win if it's them. Yeah, Twitter has been very, very angry about people uh, doing well on YouTube, doing well with crowdfunding, 
uh, doing well, you know, taking deals like Substack, et cetera. And it is, it's crabs in a bucket, crabs in a barrel. Um, All I keep thinking is the Darla gif from uh you know little rascals where she's like yeah the can that's what that's all, that's all i keep thinking when you're reading this yeah it's like stay angry i don't know what to tell you i, I mean because it's not true that they're like oh it's just a bunch of cis white creators yeah there are but i hate to break it to you uh a good chunk of creators who work for marvel and dc and have had established their careers just happen to be uh, white dudes, you know, they they do. Now, there's more diversity in comics now, I think, than there there has been in the past. But still, a lot of the, the bigger names in comics just uh, happen to be white dudes. Right. And even if they open up to other people, that doesn't mean you're going to make any money. It's going to be like any other platform. You have to you have to have already brought it to to be worth spending money on. And that's the problem. They want they think that that if they're in, they were given money, even though they have no audience, that would make it fair. Yeah. It's like, but that's not how this works. No. And in, in the real world. In the real world. And we're starting to see more companies realize that, yeah, you know, they can, it's not platforming somebody. I don't think it's really platforming somebody because like they, they already had a platform. There's banking. They want to bank on their platform. Right. They're already bringing their audience. The same with Indiegogo. There were people that were very pissed off that Indiegogo was platforming. Uh, comic book creators or whatever, those people already had an audience from other places, whether it was in comics or YouTube or whatever. And Indiegogo was just, you know, just skimming. just cashing in on the platform. Cashing in. And they were a San Francisco-based company. I so mean, they're losing control. I hate to tell people that. But, I mean, that's just how it works. I mean, I know it sucks because we've been there before where we just started out. And it's hard. But y'all can do it. You just have to work really hard and be smart. You can get platforms too, and then they come to you for this kind of stuff. But that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to put up content people want, build that platform up, and then then they can, you know, cash in on it as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's always been this way. I mean, this is the unfortunate reality of capitalism is that it basically, it takes money to make money. It takes an audience to be able to monetize. Well, that's why they don't want capitalism, but they think that the way they want it, it's going to work too. That everybody, if everybody gives a piece of that, then everybody's going to get one crumb. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, and it's, it's and it's fair then because everybody has the same crumb as you. But then yeah. nobody's doing well. No, but uh, you know, again, we have a lot we have uh, look, I'm not trying to be that guy. I've been that guy. We've, for we've years. been on that side I, of it. We understand. Yeah. But um the truth is there are far more people that want to make comic books and art then there is a market to realistically support everybody who wants to do it. Now, it's easier than it's ever been. To be able to get your stuff seen. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like every other person that that uh, reads comics also wants to make comics. Back in the day, yeah, you had people that wanted to make comics, but there were way more readers, mm -hmm. you know, and they were kind of desperate. Like th at one point in time in the late 80s, early 90s, like Marvel would work with you. They're like, yeah, you kind of suck, but you're kind of OK. So we'll we'll work with you because we got to get some artists in here. You know, and now it's it's like unless you're already a name, you're not getting a gig, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, you know, somebody you're the right kind of person. You're willing to work cheap, whatever. But it doesn't mostly you're willing to work cheap or the right kind yeah. of person. It's how it's become. And it's going to get worse because actually what's going to happen now is since all these uh, big name creators are leaving for Substack, their the, their replacements are going to be paid less than they were. I guarantee Probably. it. But the thing is what, you know, the problem is, is that they've created this, this way this is. I mean, they've, they've gate kept comics. They pushed everybody out. Yep. And now the people that were big that they've pushed out, are they don't just suddenly be small just because you're in charge now. They're still big creators. People, they still have an audience. People still want their work. You now putting yourself in that seat doesn't mean automatically that you're going to have an audience. And they don't seem to understand this. No. Um, so, I mean, this is going to be, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens, um, with this. I think, I think if nothing else, this coupled with Webtoon shows that there is an audience for digital comics. Uh, now they the only, know it. Yeah, they know it. The only thing I'm worried about with this is that, um, you know, this is another tech bubble. Like this is all being bankrolled mm -hmm. with venture capital, venture capital, and eventually it's going to run out. Mm -hmm. But I, my feeling on this is if you can make some damn good comics that wouldn't have gotten made otherwise, and you retain the rights, and you're getting paid basically for your time to make them, there really is no, there's nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. I mean, there really isn't. Um, but always have a lawyer look over the contract. Always have a lawyer look over the contracts. So we're gonna wrap this one up. Mm -hmm. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.